body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individual members of it. The word that best describes this to me and related to football is camaraderie. The root of that word being combat, which means to lodge in the same room, but closest related to soldiers in battle. Like my football team, we are all soldiers in battle trying to get a common goal, a common purpose together. But in here, we are a team of soldiers for the Lord, fighting the good fight of faith. We are united as one, we suffer together, we rejoice together, and we win together. So let's partake of communion together in unity of Jesus Christ, and remember the honor and the sacrifice He made for us so that we could be dead, buried, and resurrected with Him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us all together this morning. Um, we just pray for this time together where we break bread with each other and with you, Lord. We just pray that in all we do, we just remember you and the sacrifice that your son made for us. We love you so much and thank you for letting us be a part of your team. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I, I come to like football. Uh, my wife can attest to that. I do enjoy watching uh, college football. Anyway, we are in Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read the first verse. And it doesn't tell them for uh, the next oh, month or so. What? Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men, to be noted by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. We looked at uh, chapter 5, and we had all, all the blessings. You know, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for All the way down to uh, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed, you are supremely blessed. Those of you who are in the kingdom of God are supremely blessed. It can also mean happy. <laughs> blessed, if you are, you know, supremely blessed. You ought to be happy all the time. And so then Jesus went on to say that you are the light of the world. You are the salt. Light of the world. And you are through Jesus Christ. If you are the light of the world, and you manifest light through the fruit of the Spirit comes out from you. <coughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, you know, all those things. Basically, self control. We manifest those things through Jesus Christ. To the world. Does the world need to see the manifestation of Christ? They do. Because they're going to see it through us. And when we share the life of Christ Jesus with them. Then he goes on to say after that, is the what? Your righteousness or yeah. <coughs> to practice that of the scribes and Pharisees. Into the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, we you know, have infused righteousness through Jesus Christ. He has made us holy and blameless before himself. Out of sin. But, he talked about manifesting righteousness. You know, we are, and then he goes on and shares different ways that we can, you know, Manifest righteousness to those, um, well, to the church, to each other, and to those who are out in the world. And so, practicing righteousness, we should be doing that all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Jesus said we should be in practicing righteousness. But we see here in verse 1, he says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men. Why is it, or why do we practice righteousness? Or what, what's the motive behind what we do? God not just uh, look at you know, what you do. He looks at why. And what is the motive behind that? And so it's important that uh, uh, we, you know, whatever we do, we check our motives. If it's something that is going to glorify God. And so Jesus warning here, uh, beware of practicing the righteousness as we know that it's by, by men. Are our motives pure? Are our motives sincere? Paul in his writing to Timothy did. The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Yeah, it's all about the motive there. Is it possible to do the right thing, but for the wrong reason? Yeah. We can do it all the time. And we want to be those who do the right thing for the right reason. So, God is interested in that. In Proverbs 16, 2, uh, 
the writer has said, all the ways that men are clear, are clean in the dust of eyes, but the Lord weighs the motives. He weighs the motives. One thing we're never going to be able to do is pull a basketball on that. We'll never be able to do that.
speaks of the courage of those preaching the word of God. Yeah, they figured, hey, if Paul can do it, we can do it. He was a great example to them. I gave him courage to speak the word of God. You know, preach the gospel to those who need to hear it. But he had two different people. There were those who were ready to get news out of love. Love for people. Desire friendship period to all come to repentance. Loving people. Then there were those who out of hand. Selfish condition, envy, and strife. Preaching word of God. Now, at the back of the day, they wanted the same attention as Paul did. Well, here's Paul, he's a big name preacher. Everybody wants to be like Paul.
do it with a pretext for greed. Now this one kind of burns my face a little bit. Seeing a lot of big name creatures out there. And seeing, I mean, God, the heart of this chapter, what they're doing it for. I mean, if they ever like, you know, get on YouTube and they have documentaries of these folks. And how much money they are making off of the poor and the desperate. Just send your money in and you will receive higher goal. And while they're taking in all that money, they're glorifying God for blessing them with all that money. Well, like out there. Damn. You see the multi-million dollar home that they have. There's one guy. He was bragging about his airplanes. He has three jets that are worth over $100 million a piece. Tell what he said, boy. Wrong reason. And his reward is going to be on this side of heaven. He says, Nor did we see glory from him. Yeah. Can't be here for the glory and the honor of him. It's not all about me. Now we're in it to glorify God, right? That's who we do it for. And we shouldn't be seeking the glory of men. We're seeking the glory of God. God examines our hearts. Let's go to James chapter 4. Came 
all, and pulled it in the driveway with a nice, shiny, red bush in my love. That would be a little raw, right? Yeah, obviously raw. That would be asking with wrong motives that I may spend it on my pleasure. In reality, uh, you Learn good news, the gospel, learn salvation. 
Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As we pray for over these praises and prayers, let's remember that. From Jim K. He says, for Will Captain, who is who will be in Poland, traveling mercies for all, healing of hearts, bodies, and souls, uh, and praise for God studying the world. Pray for the firefighters on the lookout fire and the Fall Creek fire. My mom lives on the Mackenzie River evacuation and evacuation may happen again. Air quality is pray for air and ground support um, fighting fires. Betty Lou says, please pray for the people of Maui and for the rehabilitation of their land. That being says, continue prayers for Hawaii and for all Californians in the way of the storm. Pray for our church and Kirk and all our members. Amen. Kevin and Rebecca ask for prayers. Laurel is a friend of theirs in Santa Rosa. She is 40 years old and dealing with lifelong struggles with mental illness. Please pray for a miraculous healing in her mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day together. Thank you for this opportunity just to come to you boldly, Lord, and present our requests to you, our prayers and our praises. Lord, we pray for safety for Bill Compton traveling as we go to Poland. We pray for you know, your will to be done with that trip and with the hearts of the people that he's there to touch, Lord, through you. Um, this he will ask for healing for the her hearts and bodies and souls. Um, we pray for family, friends, um, and other places for safety um, and just healing with their mental illnesses. Pray for miraculous healing in their minds, Lord. Um, we pray for the disaster in Hawaii, the weather, that you just, you just take care of people, Lord, and put your, just touch them and to give peace to those affected, and just keep people safe, and let you know we're all God, just let your will be done in the whole situation in, in Hawaii and parts of California, Lord. Um, we pray for, for the fires that we are encountering around us here. Um, we pray for the people, the firefighters and the people whose homes are in the line, Lord, that you just take care
should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know. by the word, and we have several visitors, so be sure to greet them and uh, spend time encouraging one another in love and good deeds. Have a great week. Why should I gain from his reward?